It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lesseur of the CBS television news staff, and Earl Mazo, political reporter for the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Harrison A. Williams, Jr., Congressman-elect from New Jersey. Congressman-elect Williams, uh, you're 33 years old, and I believe the first Democrat to be elected from your district in New Jersey, which is Union County. Can you tell us, do you have any advice for young men who are thinking about going into politics? Well, to the young people who are interested in public affairs and good government and uh, have a feeling for politics, I, I hope my election will, will encourage them to uh, participate and seek office. What do you actually need to go into politics? Do you need a lot of money? Uh, no, no you don't. Well, do you need the backing of a political boss? No, that's not essential either. Well, uh, we've heard it said, sir, that the election of the uh, Democrat in the 9th District of Wisconsin was due to dissatisfaction by the farmers up there over Secretary Benson's uh, farm policies. But your area in Union County is uh, suburban and industrial. How do you account for your victory there? Well, we, we had many factors operating. I don't believe there was any single issue, uh, such as the issue, the farm issue out in Wisconsin. Uh, we had, we had a... Uh, an issue of bossism in the county in the Republican Party that it uh, had uh, served to take the government away from the people in the selection of candidates. There had been a disregard for the thinking of the people. We had another local issue uh, uh, where I had followed the record of the former congressman and uh, believed in it and told the people that I would try to do the same kind of job that he did. We had many issues. I wanted to ask you about that. Your predecessor was Congressman Clifford Case, a Republican, and he won uh, uh, election to the fifth term last year by a majority of 55,000. And here you, a Democrat, win by 2,000. Do you think that uh, quite a lot of that is because that you, you, you ran on Mr. Case's record? I believe so, yes. As I say, uh, people had uh, uh, grown to know Clifford Case and his record, and they liked it. And I believed in it, too. I well, followed the issues. Was it a Republican or a Democratic record you were running on? Well, uh, I, don't, uh, I wouldn't put a label on it, uh, on the issues. Uh, as it turns out, on many votes, Clifford Case was with the Democrats. Well, Congressman Elect, since you were running on the uh, record of a, a progressive Republican, would you say you were, had been capitalizing on a, uh, a split in the Republican Party between the so-called Young Turks who supported Eisenhower at the convention and the Old Guard? Well, I don't know if you'd put it as capitalizing on it. it this, that was the fact. I followed the principles and believed in the same principles as the pre predecessor who happened to be a Republican. And uh, I found that, uh, that uh, people would know what I think uh, uh, more easily if I expressed it that way, which was the, the factual situation. Well, towards the end of the, uh, the campaign, as I recall, uh, <coughs> the Republican National Committee and and the congressman for Eisenhower and whatnot as I, uh, uh, pretty well flooded the, the 6th district with their people and they had big bandwagons and, and barrage balloons saying a vote for Mr. Hetfield, your opponent was a vote for Eisenhower. Do you think that anybody voted for you uh, because they were voting against Eisenhower? Or very many people did? Well, I don't believe that was the basic issue. I uh, uh, expressed the feeling that wherever possible I would support the president and uh, believe on many issues that uh, my party has supported the president. And I don't believe that this was a vote against Eisenhower, although there were, there is a, a real disappointment with much of his program and a, a real disappointment too with the 10th uh, Congress, uh, with the uh, 10 months of the Republican Congress. And I believe they were voting uh, to a great extent against the record of Congress. Well, but Congressman not so Williams, uh, Mr. Mazo just said that the uh, Republican National Committee had poured money and manpower into the campaign of your opponent. Did the Democratic <coughs> National Committee do the same for you? No, they, we had neither uh, manpower nor money from the National Committee. Did you try to get any? Yes, we, we talked to them and uh, would have liked to have had some money. 
Why didn't they give it to you? Well, I, I don't believe they, uh, they had uh, a great deal of money in the first place, and uh, uh, the, the statistics showed that the uh, race was uh, uh, not too favorable from our viewpoint. We in the district knew that it, uh, uh, there was a good possibility, but when you look at the cold uh, figures in Washington, it didn't look too hopeful. Did you actually think you could win? Yes, I did. Well, if they considered it a lost hope in the National Committee, did you get any outside aid at all from the uh, other progressives in the party? I uh, had replies from all over the country, as a matter of fact. It wasn't uh, uh, much money uh, in total, but it was encouraging to have support as from as far west as Seattle. Support in what regard? Uh, money. I, uh, we, we had a budget of $3,000, and part of that came from, uh, from all over the country. Well, how, much, how much of it came from within the district or within the state? Uh, I would say about uh, $2,500 was, was purely local. Well, Congressman, you said that uh, you would, in your campaign, that you would support uh, enlightened Republicans, as you call them, on the uh, most of J President Eisenhower's foreign policy. What s specific elements in that foreign policy were you referring to that you would support? Well, uh, first of all, I, I believe and feel that the, uh, the president is... Uh, has a strong belief in the United Nations as a, a means to achieving a peaceful world. And uh, if that is his policy, and I think it is, I agree that the United Nations is, is the first and foremost way of, of working towards a peaceful world. Well, uh, may I ask on domestic policy, do you back uh, Taft-Hartley Act? No. Uh, I, in my campaign, stated I'm in favor of repeal. I have read the amendments that uh, it has been suggested the president approved of at one time. I find myself in agreement with them. I believe in stating that I favor repeal. Uh, I want to, I, w I would like to see the Labor Management Relations Act out of politics. I do know that there are many, many people that feel Taft-Hartley is anti-labor. And I, and I do think that uh, we can get a lot of good out of Taft-Hartley. We can get a lot of good, too, out of the Wagner Act. I do believe it should be a new well, do you, act. Do you think that that was an element in your election, since uh, Union County is a highly industrialized area, that you did uh, support repeal of Taft-Hartley? Well, yes. I, I believe that uh, uh, a large number of working people uh, favor repeal. How about taxes? What, uh, what position did you take in the campaign and what position do you have now on, on the matter of, of the income tax, say 10% reduction in January and <coughs> so forth? Well, I uh, <coughs> believe that uh, uh, faced with the, with the tremendous necessary spending for the defense program and the, uh, the assistance to other nations all towards the, the end of creating a peaceful world, uh, that is first. If we can have that and reduce taxes, yes. But I don't believe we should cut taxes before we secure this world against, uh, or this nation and the world against the communist menace. Well, I think the Secretary of Treasury said the other day that uh, the cuts were going to come anyway, the, the ones that are in the, in the offing. Uh, does that mean that you'll favor some new tax, a sales tax or something like that to make up the difference? Or? No, I, I don't believe that. Uh, I know I'm not uh, in favor of a sales tax. And I, and I believe the administration, too, has changed its position from what it was about eight weeks ago on a sales tax. Well, Representative Williams, in uh, recognition of the fact that uh, a Democrat has won a victory in uh, your district and also in Wisconsin, this seems to make Republican control of the House uh, rather a borderline control. Can you tell us, do you think that the uh, Brownells bringing up the case of the late uh, Harry Dexter White had poli political significance at this time? Uh, yes, I, I think so. In, in my district, the Republicans were running scared, as the expression goes, and from what I read in the California uh, race, they were running scared. The timing of the Brownell uh, statement, uh, the forum in before which the charges were made, I believe indicate a, a some real political motivation for the, the charges. You think it was a move of desperation? Yes, I, I believe that it was. I, I believe well, it was. Well, do you think it actually uh, influenced the California elections, which went uh, in favor of the Republican? Well, of course, I can't say. I, I haven't uh, become familiar with what was going on out in California. It seemed a little late to me to, to really have any effect. If it would have happened before your election, would, have it, would it would have influenced that? I doubt it. I believe my the people in my district would have seen through the charges as, as rendered and in the manner they were rendered.
Well, what is the actual balance in the House of Representatives now? Uh, after California, I believe it's 219 Republicans and 215 Democrats. There's one independent. Well, would you, Repo you Democrats actually have wanted to win control of the House at this time, or would you prefer to uh, let the uh, President's party control both houses? Well, of course, we couldn't. There weren't enough elections to, uh, to control the House. Well, Representative Williams, may I ask you as a last question, uh, what do you think your own election as a progressive Democrat means to the uh, entire significance of the uh, progressive side of the Democratic Party now? Well, I, I feel that my election in, in one of the districts of New Jersey, uh, together with the election of Bob Miner as governor, a young man of 45, very forward-looking, constructive, highly honest public official, uh, has established uh, uh, the younger, forward-looking people as the leaders in, in New Jersey. And uh, we have uh, uh, beaten uh, any of the elements of bossism that might have existed in the party in our state. I believe this should be some encouragement to other states where uh, the younger people are uh, struggling to establish themselves as the leaders of the party in their respective states. Well, thank you very much, Congressman-elect Williams. It's been a pleasure to have you here tonight. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesser of the CBS television news staff and Earl Mazo, political reporter for the New York Herald Tribune. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Harrison A. Williams, Jr., Congressman-elect from New Jersey. More than once, the tick of a watch has made history. Thus, at precisely 11 o'clock on the morning of November 11th, 1918, the guns were to cease firing in World War I. In your own day-to-day -day affairs, as in mine, important events are arranged according to time. <coughs> a dependable and trustworthy watch, such as Longines, is neither a mere convenience nor a sheer extravagance. To millions of busy people, a Longines watch is, in fact, a sensible necessity. In this lies a suggestion for Christmas. Throughout the world, no other name on a Christmas watch means so much as Longines, for Longines is the only watch in history to win 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and so many honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. Yet, a Longines watch is not excessively expensive. This Christmas, you may buy and proudly give a Longines watch for as little as $71.50. And bear in mind that if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, you're paying the price of a Longines, and you should insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. There is only one Atmos, the perpetual motion clock created by La Coultre. Atmos runs without winding, without electricity, powered only by unfailing daily variations in the temperature of the air. Atmos, product of La Coultre, division of Longines Whitnor. Remember, place the face on the CBS television network.